and Heidi Small is a columnist and the producer of the, and host of the video series Beyond the Plate for the Montreal Gazette. She writes about the city's best chefs and about what motivates them to create unforgettable food. Heidi's other project is raising money for a cause close to her heart. She's the founder of A Brilliant Night, which raised over $2 million for brain cancer research at the Montreal Neurological Hospital. Welcome, Heidi. Heidi. I'm Heidi. I am a new proud member of Reading Glasses, which I left at home, and Anti-Glare, so I pardon the heavy squinting up here. Um, so I'm a crusader, I'm a warrior, I'm a maniac. I chase everything, I go after it, I get it. I hope to inspire today based on the fact that I absolutely 100% don't hear or understand the word no. And it's great that this is called yes, because that's a word I hear a lot. So I hope to inspire all of you with how I block out the no and take in the yes. Uh, so Heidi, what were some of the pivotal moments for your career? Well, I think uh, almost four years ago, my father was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He was the love of my life. He was the patriarch of the family, dentist, successful. And seeing that man kind of disintegrate right before your eyes and then you know you lose the most important person, it really, I think it taught me the kind of person that I am. You're either gonna go in a ball and hide in the corner and cry, or you're gonna see that there's a warrior living inside of you and take that and use it as a catalyst for change, for going after every single thing that you want out of life. Because when you witness the end of life, you're like, okay, I have no more fears. I know what happens and I'm just gonna go balls to the wall and chase every single thing that I want. And there is something about conviction, I think is the takeaway for me. Because I changed my life and reinvented myself at 43, 44, I'm turning 45 this Friday, and I completely changed my whole career and traje trajectory within a year. So I am somebody who's saying I know how to create change and that, that conviction of this is what I want, people hear it and they feel it. What I've learned, and I feel like everybody up here would agree in that you give off an energy. There is something about when I raised over $4 million for brain cancer research, every person I go and I sit in front of, I say it, it maybe it's the mother in me or whatever it is, but I let them know that they're gonna be part of something huge and change. And there is something in the way that I speak because it's coming from within, you better believe they're following me across that battlefield because I'm saying that I am on the road to changing the platform for fundraising for brain tumor research. Okay, so then you take that and you're like, okay, how do I take that conviction? Know what you want. You know, the artistic world can be so fly and people have this idea of, you know, there's no direction and there's like a wind in the sail and it floats in any way. But know what you want. Have a clear idea of what it is. And then you go after it with that conviction and you speak to people and you look at them and you're like, this is what I want. And I am not gonna stop until I get it. You're with me and you're gonna reach success with me or you're out of here and I'm gonna go to the next person. And there's something about delivering that message that helped me. You know, because I lost my dad and a year ago I'm like, oh, what am I going to do now? And I needed to be something meaningful. And you know what? I wrote the Gazette. I went to the top of the line. I wrote the editor-in-chief and I'm like, this is what I want to do. You're missing a huge audience who love food. You don't have to have money. You don't have to be anywhere except on your couch reading about it. It is the most common, wonderful gathering of every possible person. Talk about food, talk about chefs, talk about restaurants. I'm gonna deliver this content to you. Let's do this. And I did not take no for an answer. I wrote that five o'clock Friday, like Jerry Maguire manifesto. And of course all weekend, I'm like, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't even spell check. And then Monday, because I'm an Aries, I'm like, what a nerve, I didn't get an answer back. It's Monday, like who doesn't return emails? <laughs> then on Tuesday, I get an email from the editor in chief, Lucinda writes me, get in here, we wanna to talk to you. Like there is something about the way you say it, there's no flip-flopping. It's like, I got this amazing idea and guess what, you're lucky enough to hear it. And there's something that changes the energy in a room. You have a different scent. Did I answer your question? I don't even know. You obviously are here because you have found success in something and you've received recognition, whether it was you know, with somebody 
that was very close to you or a mentor or you know somebody who could give you an opportunity when did you all start to receive recognition for your work that was really helping to move you forward and what was that recognition yes just walking down the street <laughs> i think that you know you are sometimes on your own and you're by yourself and you wonder are you only as good as your last song, your last piece, your last edit? You're always questioning yourself. And I think the beauty for me has been that my work is so accessible because it's in the Gazette that um, when I'm having a bad day, which is almost all the time, of course, you walk outside and I just tell myself, go and go to the pharmacy and take that long walk. And then along the way, it would just take one person and maybe it was an accident and they missed, I don't know, maybe they thought I was someone else, but. They're like, oh, we read your article and it was so great. And oh, you know, you brought us back to the Gazette. I'm like, that's all I need. It's just like one little thing. It doesn't change the world, but it helps move forward in saying, you know what? One extra person read something in the paper today. That's gotta be worth something. And then it's just, I think you should want the small things to move forward and not the big things because you're gonna always want for more. But if you accept and enjoy the little moments, then I think that's what, that's the longevity there in yourself. And... Heidi? Well, I'm in the middle of taking a huge risk right now in front of everybody because I just accepted a huge collaborative deal to fly all over the world every month and write about it. And I have like no idea what and how it's all gonna look and I am, living, breathing embodiment of taking a risk, but just kind of like what you were saying, the overall feeling of I am, if I take stock, I am prepared and I am ready for it because I've got a year behind me of showing me that I can execute. And that's a big thing, by the way, is like, oh, everybody has a great idea, but like, did you make it happen? And personally, do you see your idea actually unfold and the executing of an idea is, I think, the greatest way to look at what you're capable of because it's true what they say. There's like a million great ideas, but who are the ones who, the outliers who get ahead of the pack and actually make it happen? And so to kind of sum up a lot of this great wisdom I'm collecting right up here right now is to take that calculated risk. Of course, I'm gonna mess up. It's about messing up and then what you learn from it but I know that I have a year to look back and take inventory and stock and say, I've done it. Like I've actually delivered a product time and time again every month, even if I fall apart a hundred times along the way. There is something about pushing yourself, even if you have the experience or so-called whatever success is for everybody, you still have to take risks and you still have to kind of take that moment where you take stock of what you're capable of and carry it through and then jump off the cliff and just know that, okay, there's a few rocks that could slice me in half over here to the left and to the right, but there is a safe way. And I think that you're always in that moment of taking a risk if you're really always pushing yourself creatively. And that, that's a good thing. And then I like to see the pattern in front of me. So if you think about one thing you accomplish from start to finish, and you see it from the first moment you had the idea to delivery. Mm -hmm. And then I like to sit back and just look at that pattern of what it looks like and how did I get there? And then formulate lists for yourself so that you see it concretely, how you had the seed and the idea, and then you took care of it and you watered it and you put it in the sun and then you delivered a beautiful product. There's something in taking stock of that and having that concrete list of, okay, I did this this day, I did that that day, and then I got it done. So you have the proof to show yourself when you're in that doubt, which we all live in at times when we're trying to create, but you have like that piece of paper's there to show you that you did it. And then you can let, like sit back and say, okay, I'm ready to jump. The net is there, I've done my work. And I think that that's just the practical way of my brain to think, to allow myself to breathe every day to do the things I need to do, is to take that inventory and stock when you have the proof in front of you of finished, moment, you sit back, you're like, pattern, follow it. It was, oh, yeah. <laughs>